Hi, it's Leo back again with another video and today we're going to be checking out this tiny mini PC from the company called Blackview. This thing's absolutely tiny but also manages to pack a punch. Here's my iPhone for a size comparison. So here in the palm of my hand I'm carrying 16 gigabytes of RAM, half a terabyte of storage and a quad core 12th gen Intel CPU. And this thing only costs £180, so is it any good? So in this video we're going to be unboxing it testing out the gaming performance. I'm also going to be tearing it down to see what's inside. So enjoy. So here is the box. It says Blackview Mini PC. There's a bit more information on the back with the Mini PC model and processor. Let's open this thing up. There we go. This is actually very nice packaging with gold accents. Uh, and as you can see, the PC is actually tiny compared to the size of this packaging. Let's open up this flap. And here is an instruction manual. So we've got the mini PC itself and some accessories. Let's take a look at the accessories first. What have we got? So here we have a regular HDMI cable, which is uh, always useful. You can never have too many of these. We've also got the power adapter. I'm probably going to need to get a UK adapter for this. For those of you who are interested, this is a 30 watt power adapter, but that's the side. And finally, it looks like we have a mounting plate made out of metal and some screws. Because as far as I'm aware, you can vase mount this PC, which is pretty cool. Hide it behind a monitor. Okay, so the moment you've been waiting for the mini PC itself, So here it is, the Blackview MP80 Mini PC. This thing's absolutely tiny. So in terms of specs for this Mini PC, we have 16 gigabytes of RAM, an Intel Alder Lake N97 processor, which is a quad-core processor, 12th gen with a TDP of 15 watts. It comes with integrated Intel HD graphics. We're gonna be finding out very soon whether or not that's any good at gaming. In terms of storage, it has a 512 gig SSD. It comes with Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, everything you would expect from a PC in 2025. And finally, I just wanna mention the price. So on Blackview's website, it's got a slight discount at the moment and it's going for 180 pounds, which is uh, actually really good value. So you're getting pretty solid laptop specs, um, obviously without the screen and battery, but for 180 pounds, it could be a bargain if you're looking for a mini PC. So after this review, if you do want to check out one of these mini PCs for yourself, um, then I will be putting a link in the description below so you can go to Blackview's website and maybe buy one. I do also want to mention that I was sent this review unit, but I've not been paid to say anything specific. Everything I do say is my own opinion. If we take a look around this mini PC, we've got the Blackview logo on top, as well as an Intel sticker. On the front, we have some ventilation and a clicky power button. Moving around to the side, we have three USB 3 ports and it is slightly disappointing. There aren't any USB-C ports on this device and these aren't Thunderbolt ports, so you can't plug in an external GPU. Moving our way to the back, we have the port for the power connector, two gigabit ethernet ports and a three and a half mil headphone jack as well as some more ventilation. And then moving around to the other side, we have three HDMI 2.0 ports, so you can power three displays. And then finally, there isn't much on the bottom of this device, just some rubber feet. There is this LED strip around the outside, which lights up when this device is on, which is pretty cool. And just a quick size comparison to show you how small this device really is. So this is an iPhone 16 Pro Max. And in many ways, this computer is smaller than the iPhone. This is very much a pocketable PC, significantly more portable than a laptop. Ah, sorry. Before we check out the game performance, if you are enjoying this video so far, be sure to drop us a like and consider subscribing. We've just hit 10,000 subscribers, which is absolutely amazing. And it really helps out the channel. It turns out that like 99% of my viewers aren't subscribers. So yeah, if you wanna support the channel, click that subscribe button. Anyway, let's check out the gaming performance of this tiny little box. So I've hooked up the MP80 to a mouse and keyboard and a monitor. I've downloaded a couple of games on Steam and we're going to test out the performance. I don't know if this comes across on camera, but the bottom of this PC glows blue, which is pretty cool. Anyway, let's test some games. So the overall Windows experience feels fairly snappy. Shouldn't have any issues browsing the web, going on YouTube. Scrolling through YouTube is very smooth and you're easily able to play back 4K YouTube videos. So for general day-to-day -day PC usage, this MP80 is absolutely fine, more than capable. So the first game we're gonna test out is Left 4 Dead 2 at 1080p. 
In terms of graphic settings, let's have a look. We're playing the game at low settings with four times anti-aliasing. So at low settings, 1080p, we're not getting a huge amount of FPS. We're getting around about 40. And I can feel a fair amount of input delay, which is a bit annoying. We're now gonna try out 720p to see if we can increase the FPS. There we go, that's much smoother. We're getting around 90 FPS. I don't know, there's a witch. Oh, one shot. Yeah, 720p low, we're getting around 70 to 80 FPS. So it does feel very playable. The next game that we're gonna be testing out is Minecraft Bedrock Edition. So straight off, we're getting around about 60 FPS uh, and this feels very playable. Let's have a look at what settings we've got this on. So we've currently only got the render distance set to eight chunks, which isn't a huge amount. Graphics set to fancy, but this isn't the new inbuilt shaders um, that tanks the FPS completely. But I would say if you are planning on playing Minecraft on this PC, then I would use these settings. The game still looks pretty good and the render distance is fine. We're getting around 50 to 60 FPS. One thing I do want to check out is how is the fan sounding on this mini PC. So I'm going to get my clip on lav mic and hold it next to the fan. So you can definitely hear the fan, but it's not super loud. It sounds like a laptop. But anyway, I am glad to say that Minecraft is very playable on this mini PC. The next game that we're going to be playing is Skyrim. And I am going to be putting the graphics settings down to low because this is a more intensive game but we're still going to be playing at 1080p. So here we are, we're in Skyrim low settings at 1080p and we're getting around 23, 24 FPS. So I wouldn't really consider this playable, uh, but some people might. And there is a fair amount of input delay, which makes the experience even worse. So I've been in the game a couple of minutes and the interesting thing is the CPU temperature isn't really going above 65 degrees, which is nice to see. But we are pretty much maxing out the CPU and GPU. This is only a 15 watt chip, so that explains a lot. I'm just curious to see how much FPS we'll get if we lower the resolution to 720p. So we're now running Skyrim at 720p low settings and this is much more playable. We're getting around 45 FPS uh, and the input delay is much less. You know what, I'd even consider this a playable experience. Yeah, I suck at Skyrim. So next, we're gonna be testing one of my favorite games, Son of the Forest, which is a slightly more demanding game. So I have decided to lower the graphic settings. So we're gonna be playing at 720p, ultra low settings with FSR set to quality. And unfortunately, this is really not very playable. Even though the visuals still look fairly good, we're getting around seven FPS and the motion blur looks horrible. So yeah, I probably wouldn't be playing this game on this PC, it's uh, not doing too well. Uh, but saying that, looking at the sky, we're getting about 15 FPS, which is a bit better. Let's see if we can lower the settings even further. So we can lower the resolution to 480p. We can put FSR on ultra performance and get rid of all these post-processing effects. <laughs> I mean, this is more playable, but it's also not playable at the same time because I can't see what I'm doing. We're getting around 25 or oh, 30 FPS. Yeah, 20 FPS. So this is smoother, but it looks like a smeary mess. 480p. But anyway, I think it's probably fair to say that Sons of the Forest isn't really playable on this mini PC. So the next game I'm testing out is Dark Souls Remastered. I'm playing at 720p with ambient occlusion switched off. Um, and we are getting a fairly playable, almost solid 60 FPS with a few uh, dips into the 50s. But overall, this is very playable. Let's try and kill this lizard person. Yeah, we're not doing too well. Oh, we got one of them down. Come on, we can do this. One more hit. Oh, that ragdoll. Yes, we did it. Anyway, yeah, so if you do have this mini PC and you do want to play Dark Souls Remastered, it is playable on low settings. So yeah. So we're now going to be taking a look inside this MP80 mini PC to see what's actually inside. So to get inside, we need to remove these rubber feet use my fingernail and then there'll be screws underneath. So this is revealed four screws that you can then unscrew. 
first one out. And now that the screws are removed, I'm then gonna use this plastic tool to pry off the bottom plate. There we go. And it came off like that. There's then another four screws to take off. And after much encouragement, I managed to get the second section open. And here we're greeted with the CPU cooler, but we can't really see much else. So we need to go even deeper. It is still connected to the, uh, the case by some very thin wires, so I don't really want to snap them. Uh, but here we are, here's the circuit board. So here at the top we have what looks like the 512 gig SSD, and then underneath that, I don't know if you can see, it's like double stacked. Um, it looks like there's the Wi-Fi card underneath that, which is uh, it's very space efficient. Everything's just attached very efficiently to this tiny little board. On the other side, we have the heatsink for the CPU. Pretty standard. Doesn't look like there's much else that's interesting on this board. The only thing that looks upgradable is the SSD. I think all the RAM CPUs all sorted down to this board. Um, so you can't easily upgrade it. All right, let's put it back together. Push this top section back on. Clips on like that. Push the top plate back on. The final four screws. Finally gonna stick the rubber feet back on. There we go, good as new. So finally, I'd like to see how easy it is to mount this mini PC to the back of a monitor, effectively turning this into like an all-in-one PC. So in the box, it comes with this mounting bracket and this bag of screws. So what you get in the box are these two black screws and then these two gold screws. So I think it's as easy as just getting these gold screws and then screwing them into the screw holes on the back of the PC, like so. These gold screws, I think, just act as hooks for this mount. This should allow this mounting bracket to hook onto the PC like that. And then you screw this mounting bracket directly onto the monitor. And you should be able just to, don't know if I can show it, hook this PC onto the back of the monitor like so. And there you go, you have a mini PC mounted to the back of your monitor. Pretty cool setup. So in conclusion, do I think you should pick up one of these MP80 mini PCs? that comes with an N97 quad core 12th gen Intel processor, 16 gigabytes of RAM and half a terabyte of storage. So I would say it depends on what you're looking for. If you're looking for a mini PC for maybe like schoolwork or just word processing, browsing the internet, watching YouTube, or creating a small home server, then this might be a perfect option for you because for 180 pounds, you are getting a full Windows 11 PC. As we've shown, this can play Minecraft and some older titles, but not much else. Um, so this is definitely for web browsing, word processing. Um, but if that's all you want from a computer, then this is definitely a really good option. And there will be a link in the description. And as always, let me know what you think of this mini PC in the comment section below. Do you think it's a good value for money or is it a rip off? And if you have enjoyed, be sure to drop us a like and consider subscribing. And I will see everyone in my next video.